Hi, my name is Simon and you're watching Soundway TV, transforming your video experience. Happy 2020 everyone. I hope everyone's having a safe and productive year so far. Got to clear out a little backlog from the old year first. I want to tell you about my favorite movies from 2019. I'm going from 10 to 1. All right, number 10, Us. Now, I'm normally not a big horror guy, but I like to get out. So give Jordan Peele this second go round. Lupita Nyong'o was awesome in it and it had a really good twist ending. So I enjoyed enjoyed that. So if you didn't see us, check it out. Number nine, Little. If you had any doubt that Marseille Martin was a star, watch Little. You know, it's kind of a flip on a, the big from the, the Tom Hanks movie from back, back in the day. Uh, Regina, let's say Regina Hall. Regina, yeah, Regina Hall plays a business lady. She's like really mean to her employees, so she gets shrunk back down to her middle school self, and she's got to figure out how to communicate and uh, be nicer to folks. So yeah, but I enjoyed that. It was pretty funny. So expect big things from Marseille Martin going forward and Issa Rae as well I think Issa Rae I don't know if Issa Rae was a producer but she had a big part to play in the making of that movie so all right number eight got kind of a tie Netflix has got people watching documentaries and they had several documentaries that uh, I liked they had uh, the Fire Fest documentary it's just like poor Ja Rule he's just addicted to taking L's but I watched the documentary Ja Rule really didn't have a lot to do with the actual Fire Fest he just put his name on it but you know people run with a narrative okay uh, Homecoming uh, with uh, Beyonce uh, that was good. I enjoyed that one. And uh, abducted in plain sight. That was the one where the where the young is like, I'm sorry. That really worked my nerves. I'm like, how did this? How did this? How did these parents let this guy just take their daughter across country lines? And then they lied to the FBI, and that it didn't happen. It's just like. It's like some supervillain brainwashing stuff going on. This guy is like, almost like Lex Luthor when you think about it. But yeah, I enjoyed uh, all the Netflix documentaries. Okay, number seven, Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, I like this one better than Last Jedi. Not as much as The Force Awakens. It was a nice send off a tie together of all the storylines from uh, this group uh, the sequel trilogy uh, I think mean, all the performances were good it was a little long they could have trimmed it down some but I definitely feel that the future of Star Wars is on the small screen but yeah definitely uh, if you're a Star Wars fan I, I couldn't see why you wouldn't enjoy the Rise of Skywalker. Well, let me walk that back. As a casual Star Wars fan, I don't know. I don't know if the diehards are really going to love it because they've been kind of hard on movies since Empire. But definitely, yeah, check out uh, Rise of Skywalker when you get a chance. Okay. All right. Let's see what they're doing here. All right, now that that's done, uh, okay, uh, number six, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I felt that uh, Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio put a really uh, strong performances together. Normally, it's like, I was kind of iffy about watching code like actors doing a movie about actors. So it's a uh, kind of... Um, I don't know, kind of inbreedy, but uh, yeah, except for that one goofy part with uh, Brad Pitt's character is like mixing it up with uh, Bruce Lee. I was like, how's that going to happen ever? But the rest of the movie was uh, fairly enjoyable. It was like 
I was surprised by the lack of violence in the movie, and then the last 20 minutes happens, and you forget, yeah, this is a Tarantino project, so somebody's got to get beat up or shot. So, all right. Number five, How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden World. This is the final movie in the How to Train Your Dragon series. We really see Astrid and Hiccup grow up, and these dragons that we've gotten to know over the course of the three movies and the uh, Netflix uh, is it Netflix series? Well, I think the 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 home TV versions, all the Toothless and Hook Fang and um, Meat Lug. Yeah, Meat Lug's a dragon, and Fish Legs is the uh, the rider. But uh, yeah, we get to say goodbye to all of them, and it was a little a little a little sad. Not like I'm gonna boo hoo or anything, but definitely uh, we'll miss Toothless and all those uh, dragons there. So definitely and one of the rare movies to get better as the series goes forward okay number four missing link didn't a lot of people see this it kind of got overshadowed by shazam and captain marvel uh don't think here i thought it was a really good animated movie i like the claymation of zach galifianakis and hugh jackman work well together and zach galifianakis played the sasquatch and Hugh Jackman played the explorer. They were trying to prove the existence of, you know, uh, mythological creatures. And um, Zach, Galif Zach Galifianakis' character, the Sasquatch, when he finds his uh, fellow Yetis, he finds out that sometimes the grass isn't always greener on the other side, and what you're looking for might be closer to home. Okay. Avengers Endgame, number three for me. Um, I liked it. Not as much as Infinity War. That was a little bit long. They could have tightened up that uh, story a little bit. But definitely, uh, I like the, the 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 third act was really strong. Normally, kind of fall off in the third act. But the third act was really strong. And just enjoyed it. I remember I was seeing one of my friends from uh, back in the day, uh, Roger. And we just love seeing all the heroes come together. Especially... Uh, and all the, the, the lady heroes, you know, they all came together at the very end to uh, take on uh, Thanos. So definitely Thanos is one of our great screen villains. So, okay. Number two, Hobbs and Shaw. I really liked Hobbs and Shaw. Uh, what am I thinking here? Uh, the Rock and Jason Statham, they work well together. And uh, what am I thinking here? I love how the uh, Fast and Furious franchise has just forgotten all about physics. We're just going to crumple up physics and throw it out the window because The Rock is falling from a skyscraper and he's punching old dude. He lands on top of the car and just dusts his shoulders off and is like, you know what? I just love how bananas it is they just go further every movie so i'm like keep it going um that's like the most unrealistic thing i've seen all year and mind you this is a year in which a space raccoon and the god of thunder from norse mythology time travel so think about that all right i was kind of wondering how um uh, Idris Elba had to take all those robot parts just to do what The Rock and Jason Satham do normally. But yeah, there you go. But anyway, my favorite movie from last year, I would have to say, is uh, Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Not a favorite of the, the masses, but personally, I think that was the most fun I had in the theaters all year. Seeing uh, Big G go up against uh, Ghidra and all the monsters is like... They realize, hey, this is a Godzilla movie. We need to have Godzilla in it. It is like, let all the monsters do their thing. And I love how uh, Ghidra just is big old, um, a Dodrio from Pokemon, or I guess if you're familiar with the Three Stooges, where you got one lead head and then two other heads they have to get bossed around. So yeah, kind of reminds me of a little bit of a Triclide from um, Super Mario Brothers, if you're familiar with that. So yeah, those were my favorite movies from 2019 what was your favorite movie of last year put it in the comments down below don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell to find out about future videos until next time this is soundwave signing off peace